Okay, in this video we're going to learn the algorithm that allows you to calculate the day of the week given any date. So first there's two preliminary skills that you need to practice. One is integer division and in particular we're going to need integer division by 4. So basically that just means ignore the remainders. So 20 divided by 4 is obviously 5 but also 21 divided by 4, 22 divided by 4, and 23 divided by 4. These are all just 5. And obviously once you get up to something like 24, then, then you're back up to 6. Um, the other skill is modular arithmetic. So modulo 7 just means we're going to divide by 7. And it's kind of the opposite of integer division. Instead of ignoring the remainder, we're only going to pay attention to the remainder. So 3 mod 7 is basically asking the question, what is the remainder when you divide 3 by 7? So obviously the quotient is 0, the remainder is 3. 6 mod 7, again, is just 6. 7 mod 7 is 0 because there is 0 remainder when you divide 7 by itself. And you can see some of the other examples there. Now this is going to make our arithmetic, when we add up a bunch of numbers, much, much simpler. Because if we are uh, dealing with a, mu a multiple of 7, like 84, for instance, at the bottom of that list, 84 since it's a multiple of 7, 84 mod 7 is just 0. And so in our running total, uh, 84 is just going to count for 0. And in general, we always just have to pay attention to the nearest multiple of 7 below the number we're interested in. So for instance, if 60 is of interest, uh, then we really only need to add 4 because 60 is just 4 more than 56. So 60 mod 7 is just 4. OK, so the next is we're going to take a look at an example. Um, from this year, September 20, September 16th, 2020. And I'm not really going to explain everything until the next slide, but essentially the task is to add up a bunch of numbers. And every part of the date gives us a number uh, that's going to be part of a stream of numbers that we're going to add up. September gives us three, and we're going to see the uh, whole list of uh, uh, months and the code associated with that month on the next slide. But for now, just accept that September is three. Uh, we could add 16, but it's a lot easier to add 16 mod 7, which is just 2, because 16 is 2 more than 14. So instead of adding 3 and 16, we can just add 3 and 2. The century, in this case the 2000s, gives us a 0. We don't really need to add anything, which is really nice for calculating days of the week in our current century. Uh, and again, the century, um, there's going to be a list of centuries and the codes associated with them on the next slide. Then the last two digits of the year, 20, uh, that could just be added to our list. But again, it's easier to add 20 mod 7. And since 20 is 6 more than 14, uh, 20 mod 7 is just 6. And then finally, in the box there is 5. Now the 5 comes from the integer division of 20. So the, the last two digits of the year, you do an integer division by 4. And uh, in this case, we get 5. And so we're going to add 5 to our running list of numbers. And then finally, you can see below there's one extra number there, which is a 1. It's always going to be a 1, and it's going to be added to every calculation we do. And that's the highlighted 1 there. So we have 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 6 plus 5 gives us a 17. And you know, in the final step is we have to think about what is 17 mod 7. And 17 is uh, 3 more than 14. So 17 mod 7 is 3. And then you look at the list to the right there. Uh, 0 is Sunday, 1 is Monday, etc. And so a 3 corresponds to a Wednesday. And sure enough, September 16th, 2020 was a Wednesday. So what are the codes that you have to memorize? Well, for the centuries, we have, for the 1700s, we have 5. Uh, for the 1800s, we have 3. For the 1900s, we have 1. For the 2000s, it's 0, which is convenient. And then it starts over again with the 2100s being 5, the 2200s would be 3, etc. You can't really use this method to go back uh, prior to the 1700s. In fact, you can't really go back much before 1751, I think, when there was a, an adjustment to the calendar. They basically... Um, skipped over about 11 days, and so that makes it problematic to go back further than about 1750. Uh, the codes for the months, you have to memorize these as well, and there's a variety of different, uh, I would suggest using some mnemonics or using some images to help you. Um, however, if you sort of get stuck at a certain point, you can kind of figure them out. All you need to do really is remember that January is 5, and then since January has 31 days, February would be 
5 plus 31, but again, mod 7, right? So 5 plus 31 is 36, and that is just 1, mod 7. Since February only has 28 days, and that is 0, mod 7, uh, when you add that to 1, you get 1 again, which is why March is 1. And then again, March has 31 days, which is 3, mod 7, so you add 3 to 1, you get 4. So you can kind of see how the, how the sequence works there. Now there is one exception to this list, and that is if it's a leap year. So I'll explain in the next slide when a leap year is. But for leap years, the only adjustment is for January and February. Uh, we lose one for January and February. So instead of five and one, January, February are four and zero. All the other months are the same. So if it is a leap year, it doesn't matter for March to December, just for January, February. Okay, so when is a leap year? So leap years come around because the time it takes for the Earth to rotate around the Sun is not exactly 365 days. It's about 365 and a quarter. So if we didn't make an adjustment every four years, we would slowly get out of sync. So basically, a leap year comes around every four years. So if the year is divisible by four, like 1980 or 2004 or 2092, then it's a leap year and we get a February 29th. However, it's not quite exactly 365 and a quarter years, and so there's a couple little adjustments there. It's not a leap year if the year is divisible by 100. So for instance, 1800, 1900, 2100, these are all not leap years, unless the year is divisible by 400. So in fact, 2000, the most recent year that was divisible by 100, that actually was a leap year, as will be 2400 and every 400 years after that. All right. So let's take a look at a final example, something from history here. Uh, the day of the Declaration of Independence in the United States, July 4th, 1776. So every part of that date gives us a number that has to be added up. So July is 4, uh, taken straight from the table, but that's a nice way to remember it, right? July 4th is a significant date. Um, the day of the month, 4, just becomes 4. 17 is the uh, century, and that's a 5. Again, taken straight from the list of centuries. 76, the last two digits of the year. Uh, 76 mod 7 is just 6, obviously, because 76 is just 6 more than 70, which is a multiple of 7. And then we do an integer division on 76. 76 divided by 4 is exactly 19, um, so that's fine. And 19 mod 7 is just 5. So when we go to add up our list of numbers, instead of adding 76 and 19 to the lists, uh, to the list, it makes it much easier to add 6 and 5. So we have a 4 plus a 4 plus that 1 that gets added to every calculation, plus 5 plus 6 plus 5, that gives us a 25, and that is equivalent to 4 when you do mod 7. 25 mod 7 is 4 which is a Thursday. Now, adding up that list of numbers there can be made a little easier. Again, you don't have to wait till the end to do the mod 7. So, for instance, the 4 plus 4 is 8. At any step of the way, you can basically ask yourself, what is that number mod 7? 8 mod 7 is just 1, and so our running total can be 1 plus 1 plus 5, which is 7, and that's just 0. And so then we only really have to add up the last two numbers, 6 and 5, which give us an 11, and 11 is 4 more than 7, so 11 mod 7 is 4, so that's a Thursday. This is going to take lots and lots of practice, so good luck, and uh, be prepared to amaze your friends.